Hello everybody, well this is one of those podcasts we haven't done for a little while and this one is on uh, a subject which, well, we'll come to it in a second, which as engineers I'm sure we've all used all the time. Uh, But this is me, Hugh, over in Gloucestershire and over there in London town is young Phil. Down there, um, my, my, my box is oh, below you're down yours. there. <laughs> oh yes, well, today I'm I'm operating because I'm so modern. I'm operating off a pad, and you'll probably notice we move around a little bit. But today's subject is um, Excel spreadsheets taking over the world and operating the entire world from a spreadsheet. But does it have any relevance at all to to engineering, Phil? Can you help us there? I, I think you I think you can run um, the world uh, through Excel. Um, even without getting into pivot tables and all that cleverness, I think I think you can do an awful lot with Excel. Uh, a company I used to work at, uh, I noticed the accountant only used Excel. He didn't use Microsoft Word. He did all his letters in Excel as well. Uh, so so you know the, the big the big bit of the body of the, the letter would just be a one cell that he'd he'd um, uh, you know justify as he wanted, and uh, and he he never touched anything else. Um, but I I do tend to live inside Excel for for, for design work. Um, that might sound very strange, but um, uh, it's it, uh, you know I find that for cable schedules, for Jackfield layouts, for um, you know even machine room layouts, bay bay layouts, uh, you, you know the elevation of the front of a cabinet to see what equipment's going in yep, there. Yep. I find Excel to be just just the you, you know the, the, the best thing, um, uh, and and you know very very easy to to get to grips with and compared to autocad which although you know is sort of a lot of people's preferred diagramming tool um you know excel the, the, the engineer who kind of taught me about um uh um systems integration a guy called chris clegg um he said essentially the design of a facility starts at the jack fields uh, and everything else follows on from that so so uh, you know or once you've got your jackfield layouts correct, that's particularly applicable to audio. Uh, and, and in a sense, with video, if you've got um, you know a matrix, then in a sense, you know what goes in in what order on the matrix doesn't really matter. But but once you've got your jackfield layouts done, um, that dictates everything else. And yeah, and it's kind of hard to do jackfield layouts in AutoCAD. Um, uh, I, I do all my Jackfield layouts in Excel. I've, I've just got up on screen now that, that some of the data panels that I'm going to be talking about, um, uh, you know, for some of the other techniques I did. And and so it's the same panel layout that I use when designing uh, for when I then move on to printing the, the Jackfield ident strips. Um, you know, they come out of Excel as well. And again, a lot of people say, well, oh, yeah, AutoCAD, that's the way to do it. But, but it's hard to get nice fonts and things to be consistently spaced. And nowadays, Excel will drive your nice A1 uh, plotter or your, your, your A0 inkjet printer. So you can do big continuous jackfield strips. Um, and and, and the, I've, you know, for my money, they look the business. But yeah, I, was, I was very tickled by the thing you were showing me just a few minutes ago. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Well, yes. Yeah, somebody it was an exercise in uh, could I do it? Um, exactly as you said. I'd started off um, the design of the... Uh, it was... Uh, you'll remember it. It was... Um, Midnight Transfers VTR area. Do you remember that? Do. And uh, they, they did a rebuild on that. So I started off by um, laying out the video jack fields and the audio jack fields. And I thought, hmm, I wonder. So I then, uh, having created the, the jack field, I then started uh, putting the cable numbers above it because obviously that cable number goes to that particular jack. And I thought, well, hang on a second. That cable number goes to that jack. That on the audio side, well, I know that that cable number also goes to that side of the Chrome block, and therefore uh, that Chrome will jumper to another cable, and I know its number, and I know where it goes to. Anyway, before very long, I had a sort of forest of data growing up from the top and the bottom of each of these Jackfield things. But of course, then I wanted to see if I could uh, turn that into, um, into the wiring schedule, because it's the same information. Uh, and labels and the uh, uh, and the crane jumpering and it only took me about mm, four weeks of trial and error no it probably wasn't as long as that but it was quite a long time far longer than it was really necessary to take Uh, and I was using a function called transpose which um, is several years since I did it uh, but was able to take the horizontal information from uh, the jack fields and transpose it into vertical information Uh, so now I had uh, the names of the devices, the cable numbers, and blah blah blah, all the way along. So it, and, it, and it worked. It meant that um, when I was wanted to change something uh, on the labels, I could just change it on the jack field, and it would it would run right the way through uh, the whole the whole procedure. Um, 
but it took it was manual it was quite a lot of effort but uh, it was it, the exercise could be done but i mean the good thing about that is that um it's the same data so, so so if you if you transpose onto a second tab in your excel spreadsheets it is the same data so if you make a change yes. uh, you know on the on the jackfield layout page it, it 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 ripples through and 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 exactly. so you, it's all live you're not you're not in, in yeah yeah it's live you're not in the danger of dealing with old data um no. the, the the thing that, that, that uh, it's been a good habit for me is i quite often use excel um to show if I've made any holes in things, and when I say made any holes in things, that's called kind of Wyman term. But quite often, if you're doing if you're doing audio jumping, for example, um, and I've got a, a sort of my one of my standard jumper sheets up here for a recent job, um, uh, it's not e it's not hard to misalign, and then everything's out of step by one. So what you think yeah. was on Jackfield position, source position one, is now source position two, and so everything everything's out of whack, and um, and so, getting things one step out it, it, when you when you've got big long lists of hundreds and hundreds of entries is 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 easily done. Mm. But the, the the nice little thing that, that that I find with Excel, and I'll 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 just give a bit of background to this job. That the, a job I've recently finished and it's the big biggest job I've ever taken on. It was sort of two decent sized machine rooms. I think about seventy cabinets in total between these two oh, machine wow. rooms, Easy. and then you know kind of eighteen production rooms and 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 you know four audio rooms and and. Uh, lots and lots of data um, uh, that, that on one floor of this building, for reasons best known only to the um, uh, primary contractor who was the building company, they'd had their data supplier run in all the Cat6 cable for the office networks. And right. uh, and, and then they, they, they wanted us to, to terminate and test. Uh, I mean, even further than that, they were terminating in the rooms, we were terminating in the machine room. And um, yes, well, never the twain. Uh, but the the thing that that you know you often don't realise is when you're doing something all the time, you don't realise what you do. And so I said, yeah, that's fine. The, the, you know, and, and and I talked to the the manager of the company who was going to do the data, and he said, yeah, no, we'll number the cables and you know, bring them into your room. And I expected to give him uh, a, a sheet dictating the numbering scheme for the facility. But no, the, num the, the, the cables were all pen numbered, you know, not, not with coloured beads like we'd expect, but, you know, with written on pen numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the other thing is that of the, oh, how many it was, 300 cables that came into these sort of cabinets, my wiremen instinctively, because they've got the schedule in front of them, they know where in each cabinet sets of cables are going. And so they tend to sort them almost as they're bringing them into the room up under the floor, that, that, that they're, they're dividing them up into a, a sensible order. But if you just have somebody who has no concept of where the cables are going in the end, they'll quite often just present you with 300 cables in a big ball under the cabinet yeah. where they're going to go. Yeah. And, and that can take days and days to comb out. And then, yeah. you've got to, then you've got to number the cables with a sensible numbering scheme based not on the pen numbers that are written on the cables, but on the whole facility's numbering system. And bear in mind that you want the cables to present on the jackfields in the order that you agreed with the customer already, because they're splitting across three cabinets. Some cables are dedicated to one network, some to another network. And and so that quite often gets, that gets that it's hard to handle. So Excel is kind of the thing that comes to the rescue. So what I'm going to try and do, Hugh, is I'm going to try and send you... Uh, my screen, and let's see if yeah, okay. I can. So um, here is is essentially the spreadsheet that was given to me by the guys who ran in all these cables, and you can see in column A that's their numbers, and uh, the, the spreadsheet is sorted based on the room that those cables go to. So as yet we've got no mention of what jackfield positions they go to or what their function is at all. Just that cable number 159 goes to that room, D BBC DVD replication, uh, floor box one. You know, and there's, and there's what there's six cables going to floor box one, and that will become clear in a minute. <clears throat> so my first thought was, I wonder if this is a complete schedule. I wonder if all the cables are accounted for. That would be very tedious to go down through this and 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 kind of count up. Oh, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and I've got to start finding where's thirteen gone. I've got to find that somewhere, um, and uh, well, somewhere in there, who knows? So of course the first thing you do with Excel, splendid feature, is that you sort it. So I'll sort oh, wow. the spreadsheet by column um uh no no, cancel that. Uh sort the spreadsheet by column A. And immediately we've got our, our spreadsheet starting at zero. Now 
again, it's it's, more, it's tedious to have to count down through those and find if there are any holes in that schedule. Why, why on earth would you want to do that? So the next trick I do, and I do I, I do this all the time, just to make sure think lists are continuous, is I'll just do a temporary column and I'll say the contents of that column is that cell minus that cell. Of course, that gives us a one because two minus one is one. And I'll drag that down to the bottom. Oh, neat! I like this idea. And uh, uh, and so I'll do a I'll do a I'm just gonna gotta move you a second there, Hugh. I'll do a fill down, and then I'll do a conditional format on that, uh, where I highlight the cells um, uh, that are equal to uh, uh, one, and uh, I'll make them. Uh, transparent text if they're equal to one. So immediately now I can I can very quickly scroll up and down that column, and if there were any holes in the column, which of course there is at the very bottom of the column because there isn't a subsequent leading number there, it immediately pops out to me. So that's my f yeah. first little Excel top trick for checking a oh, list of like sequential that. things. Yeah. So let's get rid of that now. Um, the next uh, thing uh, is is we've obviously now got our cable sorted in number. Uh, and again, they're still, you know, going to the the, the appropriate place. Uh, but the next thing we wanted to do was we wanted to translate that into the the, the, the patch panel layout we'd agreed with the client, and 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 so this is actually across three bays. So there's there's bay seventeen. You can see similar things being referenced there: production yeah. room one, wall box, uh, uh, you know, position nine and ten, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, open plan office, um, and so at that point you've kind of really got to got to roll your sleeves up and and actually just start transposing that into Jackfield positions. You know, there's no way you can do that. But once that's done, and I've, I've Kind of, I've saved the tedium. <laughs> Look at this domestic bliss. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandson and stepdaughter just arrived, so I shall nip out of the way whilst I just put potatoes on. This is great. You're on the move. It's almost as good as those, uh, uh, as those um, Robert Llewellyn podcasts that he does from his car. <laughs> so, so here we go. Um, uh, so what you're seeing before you now is is uh, the same spreadsheet, but I've inserted. The um, the um, uh, the patch panel um, positions for uh, the, the the patch panel layout that we agreed oh, with the yeah. customer. Now I've also done a resort on it uh, because um, they wanted the the the, the 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 new label the new cable numbers that we were putting on to match to, to at least have a record of what the, how they corresponded to the pen marked numbers of of what the data installers had put on. So so. Um, you know, you see before you the finished product, which is oh, perhaps I've been a bit disingenuous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you how how in in the case of each room where there are six cat six circuits going to each floor box or each wall box, um, mm -hmm. that th th they they basically that they, they were sort of pre-assigned um, um, function based on. Um, based on the, the, the bay they came to. So bay 17 was the Avacent cabinet, uh, bay 18 was the uh, production cabinet, and bay 20, so we skip a one, bay 20 was the, um, what was the name of bay 20's network? Uh, was the corporate network. So, so back to our original sheet, the, the next thing I did was, I, I basically gave the names to match the floor box positions. And right. so, that's kind of you know another boring little job, but at least it allows me to associate wallbox positions with functionality. Once I've yeah. done that, I can then sort them based on on column H in this case because that tells me what the network function is, which then tells me how that ties up with the patch panels. Once we've done that, we can number them with our own unique numbers. And once we've done that and resorted the spreadsheet that way, we can then assign them to patch panel positions because that's what we agreed with the customer originally. So kind of a combination of, of sorting the, the spreadsheet to see if I've got any holes and uh, dropping in new information, then resorting the spreadsheet is kind of how I get from a very basic uh, set of information to a very fully featured um, cable schedule that I can then give to the wireman so that the wireman can go through looking at the numbers he's got on the cables that have been given to him, replacing those with the proper numbers that we've agreed with the customer that are part of the, the facility-wide numbering system, and then yeah. how he's going to ter terminate that onto patch panels. And of course, at every point, I do the trick 
of numbering to see if I've left any holes. So to see if I've left any holes in any of the patch panels is port 1 through 24 on, on, on data jack field 6 in car bay 17. Is that complete? Have I left any holes? And, yeah. you know, using those two little tricks, I find that I can I can generate um, Excel very quickly, very readily, um, uh, you know, confident that uh, I'm, I'm not kind of leaving errors as I go. That's brilliant. I like that. That's It's such a straightforward way of working and the idea of, i do like that tip of uh, uh, uh of subtracting the top number from the bottom number and doing a conditional uh a conditional style on it so you can just at a glance see where you've got inconsistencies it's really smart that. and then and you, you can kind of leave those in if you want because you know if, yeah. if, if it's a working spreadsheet you're always kind of inserting new lines and, and fiddling about um but uh but that you know just to go from sort of basic info to, to to the kind of spreadsheet that my, my wireman would like to see um, it, you know, is, is um, it, you know, I've, I found that to be really helpful. The other, the other thing that I'm just going to move my, 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 my myself out of the way, and I'm going to move you out of the way. When I keep saying I'm moving you wow. out of the way, it's your it's your video window. I'm moving out of the way. Um, <laughs> the other thing that, that that has been really fruitful on the last few jobs is to from the get go specify bay and and ewage position right. within the bay, yeah. because that then makes um, uh, our, our 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 cable length calculations very easy. So if I go back to uh, this is a different schedule. This is this is a, a AES audio schedule, and okay. um, uh, you know obviously I I know how the machine room is laid out because I've got the architectural diagram and I, I can see where we've put the bays, uh, and so let me find a, a spreadsheet where I can actually see the formula um, for for calculating um, uh, cable lengths. It's something that's always eluded me. I've never managed to get cable length calculations in racks right, and I'm sure you chaps have to, uh, some rules of thumb. Well, the thing is, um, uh, the Wyman can be quite dismissive. They can be quite, um, uh, you know, they just don't believe that we that, that 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 you can calculate these things correctly. But I have to say, the last maybe ten jobs, um, me and Tony, my, my sort of chief Wyman. Um, I think he's come to realise that actually, um, you know, it, it is entirely possible to calculate lengths correctly. Now, having said that, all these spreadsheets I'm pulling up now, I've clearly um, done the, um, you know, select all and then paste based on value to remove the influence of any of any formulas because occasionally you fall foul of things, particularly if you duplicate a spreadsheet uh, and the formula doesn't yes. carry across. But um, with with the with the thought that so far I've, I've got sort of some bay layouts up at the moment, with the thought that you know how far the bottom of the bay is from the bottom of the floor, you've got a cavity for the computer floor, typically eight inches, ten inches, or whatever. So you know what the sort of the hoop into the bay is. You know that you need to leave, um, uh, you know, the bay, the bay is is kind of in the order of two and a half meters tall. So if you've got the ewage, you can calculate how far up the bay you want to go. You want yep. to, but if it's going to a jack field, you want to have a nice swan neck on it. So, yep. so it has to go from one side of the bay to the other and back again. You know, worst case, and yep. and 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 you know how wide a bay is. You know, typically six hundred yes. millimeters, and so, and so so down a long run of racks, you can calculate lengths very very accurately. And I found, you know, using this method, and then just kind of looking at the the, the, the values that that, that that Tony the Wireman would have then written on in pencil. I've kind of refined my formula now so that. You know, so long as I get the bay number and the and the ewage position correct, you know, I know I'm within, you know, centimeters of what he'd calculate, and we right. and there's there's not very much scrap cable at the end of the day, kind of thing. Excellent. And, and that that's meant we've with with some confidence been able to cut a number, you know, thousands of cables off site, ready to get on site, plug up and dress them in, kind of thing. So that's that's kind of done Brilliant. us done us proud as well. Uh, and I really should find a spreadsheet where I can just kind of prove what one of those formulas looks like but i'm struggling at the moment um, <laughs> just because just I'm... looking at your, uh, your oh, there uh, we go there we go oh, oh go on. oh yes the... so, hold on Let's have a look so i'm squinting at it so what are we doing here so, so m500 minus p500 so m500 minus p500 is the differential between the two bay positions okay um plus um, the bay position times five centimeters, so that's five centimeters per u. That that gives us that leaves us a tiny little bit more. It's four and a half centimeters really, um, yeah. uh, and then the uh, um, again in the other bay, and then we add on four and a half meters for uh, the drop into the computer floor, the drop out of the computer floor, and 
the the necessary you know coming into the cabinet at each end so that formula yeah. there so long as i've got those things right the bay position the bay and the positions within the two bays so the start and end position of you know from the video jack field through to the matrix so long as i've got those things correct i know that that cable will be 7.9 meters um fantastic you know and as i say that's that's sort of done me proud and it it didn't take it took like an afternoon of scratching my head and talking to tony and you know waving a measuring stick about to get that kind of formula exactly as i wanted it um well, that's a super little tip. I was just thinking about your jack fields when you're, when you're doing them. Something which I tend to do when I'm sort of mulling over layouts of jack fields is instead of using um, just, just the cells themselves, I use uh, text boxes um, to pop in. So I've got, I've got models of each of the, each of the uh, products to go into the, into the rack as, uh, as a text box of a certain size. So I can just slip them around. Uh, oh, rather I see. Than... I see. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I, it's it's just it helps you know as as a, as a sort of way of just drag and dropping things, and you can snap as well, so you, you can you can. Oh, that's quite uh, elegant. So a digibeater stays at kind of five plus one yeah, use right. as as you move it around. That's very nice. Yeah. I might I might rob that idea. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> um, so um, so what else did I want to mention? Um, oh, of course, the other thing is that that quite often in what we do, um. Uh, you'll start off with a, with with so, so 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 here's 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 the video schedule for the matrix is a big big two eight eight by two eight eight matrix. Uh, so here's here's the you know talk about file based. You know these guys have got twenty uh, thirty seven VTRs in this new machine room. You know you can't believe it. Can. VTRs. Now yeah. what's a VTR? Remind me. I've seen one of those ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's supposedly what you don't have in a tapeless facility. <laughs> That's right. Um, so so. so so, so here's his very typical uh, you know, video jack field zero one source one goes to matrix output one you know and, and and there's some details there it's coaxial cable of that style with those ends on it you know and there's some extra info there for what card it lands on on the back of the of the matrix which you know I try and throw in as much info as I can that might help the engineer who's fault finding his dodgy matrix you know two years down the line and he wants to know if it's a card or if it's a you know it's just more info isn't it yeah. Now, having said that, so you got so if we're thinking about video matrices, you've got your ins to your matrix and your outs to, of your matrix, both via jack fields. Obviously, the matrix outputs come to the source of the jack field, and then the destination of the jack field goes off somewhere to a piece of equipment, typically, typically a VTR mm -hmm. in this case, or you know, lots of other things. And then, and then the uh, then the inputs to the matrix um, present on the destination strip of, of the jack fields. So there's there's uh, video jack field 13, destination one, matrix goes to matrix input one. And, on, and surprise, surprise, on the top of the jack field, there's VTR one SDI output. Now, um, in the case of equipment within the machine room, I'll typically not send that via a CTP, via, via a termination panel on the back of the matrix, you know, because it's a local cable within the machine room. However, when we start getting into the, the runouts to... Um, uh, uh, you know, production rooms, or so, so I've scrolled down there. We can see that um, I've got some feeds coming back from production rooms, some return feeds. Um, they're going to have to present on a, a coaxial termination panel on the back of the cabinet. You can't expect to to nicely dress in cables that are, you know, fifty meters long. Um, you know, and, and get them, you know, to a good length, sort of thing. So, so I'll, I'll terminate those on a CTP on the back of the matrix, which means that I am going to have to have a second spreadsheet detailing the other side of the CTP. You know, not the inside yes. of, the, of the CTP, but the outside. And so that typically becomes a CTP plug-up schedule. And all I do in that situation is I just, I just make it. I, I you know, I, I literally do a uh, a move or copy. I, I create a copy of of the, the spreadsheet that describes Jack Field to back of CTP. And that then becomes front of CTP, out to, out to equipment. And because I've put on, you know, in the notes section, italicised to remind me that it's a note, um, all the info's there already. And I just have to kind of rearrange the columns a bit and delete some stuff a bit, you know, to, 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 to wind up with my CTP plug-up schedule, which, you know, carries the CTP and, and the room data. So, and I, and I also tend to as well leave the internal number and the external number on the CTP plug up so that, again, hopefully the engineer doesn't have to look too far when he's going back and, and checking out if I've got a problem between the CTP and the matrix or the CTP in the room. And he can, he can see all the info he needs to there. And I, left, I leave the Jackfield reference on there and where it goes to in the production room. Um, so, you know, some, some, some schedules are very much aimed at the wireman, the guy who's going to make this, you know, build this. 
but but I also try and leave in as much info as I can to be helpful to the engineer. So and so that's going to happen. Yes, I was just thinking about again. I was just thinking about the use of the spreadsheet. Um, I haven't done it myself, but when you're doing a rack layout uh, the way you've been doing them using the cells, of course that would be a useful place to record um, the power requirement for each item of equipment. Here, yes, so, yeah. piece, so let, uh, let for the load. Let me open up a uh, a, a schedule from a um, from another um, from another job. And uh, if I scroll down uh, to the bottom of this one, that's exactly what I do. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I take a, a, a power, um, uh, um, you know, reference for each each piece of equipment, total that up, so I know how much each cabinet is consuming power-wise. Turn that into a current, so that you know we can we can be a certain with the um, the electrician. And at this point, we 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 direct you back to our old <laughs> podcast about about mains wiring for facilities. But also, it's useful to then be able to turn that into a a heat um, requirement for the bay as well. Um, so we we knew, for example, that uh, that that machine room was notionally generating two hundred eighty two thousand BTUs of heat, and that's that's useful info for the aircon guy. Um, now, people say, how on earth? How on earth can you turn uh, electrical power requirement into a heat requirement? Well, I mean, truth to tell, every piece of broadcast equipment, 99.9% .9 of the power it consumes comes back out as heat. You know, Indeed. there's not very much power used to light the LEDs on the time code counter on a VTR. You know, there's not very much power that's actually being turned into video signals. I mean, how, how many watts is, you know, a volt into 75 ohms? That's, that's you not know, a lot. And, and you're not whirling two-inch tape anymore, so there's yeah. no actual motors. Well, but even the weight. motors, you know, e even the rotation of the motors eventually gets turned into heat, doesn't it? There's, yeah, it there's pretty much no energy that leaves a piece of broadcast equipment that doesn't leave it as heat in the end. Doesn't leave it down the down the, 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 the sound or, or picture pipe. Yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah, well, yes. So the characters leave the room, and the uh, the XLRs leave the room at line level. But again, it's, it's milliwatts, isn't it, of, of electrical power compared to the kilowatts of or, or watts of electrical uh, of, of heat power that's that's leaving the equipment. So yeah, I normally just tell the aircon guy, yeah, you know, we're consuming this many amps. It's going to be this much heat, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're going to be within 90, within a percent of the, the real figure. And in fact, that that. If, if if I've if if in the case of this job, I've 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 done all those calculations, I, I would then have a power and heat summary because quite often aircon guys like to know where the heat in the room is. So that's the kind of, sort of typical kind of summary of showing us where all those things are. And and the nice thing about Excel is, of course, you can reference cells. So so I'm, I'm, if I if I click on on um, you know any of these figures, they're referencing. Um, uh, numbers in different tabs and in fact Excel can also reference numbers on different spreadsheets so long as they're on the same file system which yes I mean uh, again when you're when you're juggling things if you can if you get around to it you can also name cells so when you're doing totals you can give them actual names and that that can be very useful for a um, confusing job I, I often do it when I'm dealing with budgets and I've never like. I've never done that before what, what's the procedure there um, it's not terribly complicated you can do it actually um, Although I often get it wrong, you see where it says M23 in the top uh, uh, top left corner, just just above the, the A column. Yes. Uh, you can type directly into that and give it a real name. Um, oh, by Jove! Right. So you give it a name of you know, something or other so. and say okay. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work for me, but uh, if otherwise, if you go to so yeah. So sometimes that doesn't work for me, sometimes it does. Otherwise, go to insert. Um, now, it's up. I can't see it on your screen. I haven't got mine in front of me. Um, but you can insert names. Uh, it doesn't always work from the right from, from the right click menu. You have to do it from the main menu, at least on the version of Excel I've got. Right, so right. Insert. Well, I'm, I'm going to play with that for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's worth it. So It's worth it because, you, because and I'll tell you a good thing uh, about it, especially when you're doing lots of summaries of things, you can get the list of names and drop them as a complete list. So it saves a lot of typing. Um, but, yeah, it's worth playing. Play, play, play with your names. Yes, yes. Now, um, you mentioning versions. Um, uh, I find that you kind of have to do this with Excel. Um, you know, I, I use OpenOffice at home because I, I didn't want to stretch to Microsoft Office at home. But, I, you know, I do find that Excel... 
excels, if you will, um, for, for this stuff. I've, I've never been able to get to grips with any of the LibreOffice or OpenOffice, you know, kind of open source versions of, of the Office Suite to do this. You know, I, I think for work you've just got to you've just got to stretch and and pay for Microsoft Office. It's the one that yeah. seems to get it all bang on correct. Yes, the controls I find uh, easier to use. I, I still have, I find it, I find LibreOffice and OpenOffice still rather clumsy to to to, uh, to move around. So um, I'm sure the functions are all there, but uh, yeah, I find they're just aesthetically much harder to deal with. The, uh, the thing I find with Excel and and uh, so what I'm what version am I running here? This is um, this is how can I find that out? How do I do about Excel? Uh, well, whatever this is, this is two thousand and seven version, I think, um, where they where they have the uh, the ribbon, the um, this yeah. thing with the most used functions on it, um, which I've never really quite got used to, um, and I just kind of bless the fact that I learned Excel back in DOS days when I and, and so I learned all the control keys, yeah, and uh, and and they 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 still work thankfully, <laughs> so I have no idea. So I I, I do a control one to, to to do a format cell, and I have no idea. Uh, you, you can probably right, you probably middle. right click and get to it, can't you? But, but I just habitually control one to do that, um, uh, and, uh, and and so I suppose in a sense I've just I've just got so used to Excel over the last couple of decades that 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 anything that even veers a tiny bit off the beaten path is kind of almost unusable, which is perhaps a bit yes, unfair. Yes, absolutely. Now I just want to show you something else. So this is um, this is a. Um, a spreadsheet that we use. It's our it's our workshop inventory, and 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 so uh, this was originally uh, fettled up by um, uh, my colleague Matt Ward, and uh, and so you know we we have a we have a column on the side here that shows us you know part descriptions, and uh, and then and then on this side we've got kind of part numbers and and you know what we what we pay the manufacturer and sort of minimum order quantities and you go all the way to the end of the of the spreadsheet you can see what stock we're currently holding of those parts in the workshop and uh, the um, and of course you know we total columns up and you know, all this sort of fastidious fastidious stuff but the thing I really like about Excel is um, you can do this thing of splitting the screen so I always want to see what the describer is you know it's a panel connector Nordic D cutout resets BNC back to back and I want to be able to scroll along here, keeping that in place. That's all very good. And uh, I want to be able to scroll up and down my list as well, uh, and and but keep my headings column as well. So so the 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 the, the, uh, the view split function is how you do that. And then you see it's enabled there. And I use that all the time for, for kind of holding things still while I'm scrolling up and down spreadsheets. It's it's a terribly powerful piece, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm convinced you could run the world on it. <laughs> well, uh, judging by the weather, I suspect somebody who's is trying to run the world on on, on Word, uh, they should be changing <laughs> to Excel straight away. Yeah. Uh, now, I was doing all the predictions do, do, on do the wrong use, software. Do you use Visio much, Hugh, for, for, for diagramming? I, and such? I, I have again a very old version of Visio, and I use it in preference to any other drawing uh, thing. But what I haven't done is is married the two together. I know you can, but I. Yes. Well, of course, this was always the promise with with um, with AutoCAD um, that um, that we'd be able to um, have direct links to to live data objects in 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 other things. So, so I'm going to open up a recent AutoCAD diagram here. Again, this is the same big job I've just been referring to. Um, oh, oh, my virtual machine is. Uh, Misbehaving. I'm sure it'll sort itself out in a minute because I'm, I'm having to run Windows inside a VM while I'm recording this, um, which is how I normally work. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Well, almost there. Let's go to my model. Um, move that out of the way. Oh no. no. But yes, yeah, so if I if I if I look at my um, so this is that same video matrix, and you can see my outputs, and um, uh, you know there's my port number on the back of the matrix, cable going to the patch panel, there's the patch panel reference, and then the patch panel on the other side of the CTP. Um, I actually had to type these all in manually. I've never successfully been able to get AutoCAD to reference a list from Excel, um, you know, and I'll bless the day when that does work because that'll save me a whole lot of time. Yeah. 
Yes, I mean, the, the, the programme that I was telling you about before, um, uh, Wirecad, uh, which I think is on version 6, version 7 now, <coughs> it doesn't do it with Excel, but it, I mean, the, the original one, which I, I tried out probably about six years ago, um, was only an access database. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and the, the idea is a great one. It's, it's you call up a, a, a device and say how many ins and how many outs and whether they're audio, video, data, whatever. Um, you put the information into it and then it will generate a block uh, 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 in, a, uh, in a runtime um, AutoCAD um, for you. And you can then say, I'll have that connected to that. I haven't. I didn't ever uh, pay the money and buy the version which would go, which would suck in from a, um, a spreadsheet and convert it into a drawing, or, or, or vice versa. But it, but it is there. The only trouble is, I found it was really slow and clunky. It could be that I need to have, you know, sort of, uh, uh, sort of cryogenically cooled supercomputer to make it work. But uh, uh, my coal operator one didn't do it. But, uh, well, what are your thoughts on on sort of cable schedules against um, uh, you know, diagrams? Um, I mean, my thing is that, that a modern facility tends to be just either matrix or network switches or those kind of things connected to something, yeah. maybe through a patch panel connected to something, and that's the end of it. And in a sense, the diagram is almost the Excel spreadsheet just with some lines drawn between things. Um, well, yes. I mean, and, that's and I don't, is that I don't you know, I, I, I normally... I don't do the diagrams until the very end of the job, and they're really just for the customer's entertainment. I know when I ran facilities, when I ran engineering in facilities, I never used to bother with diagrams. Just as long as I had the schedules, I was good. But I know a lot of kind of people, particularly old school guys, they kind of like to see a diagram. You got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's actually, it, it may not be down to which, which uh, generation of school you went to. It could be just whether you're a visual person or, or not. Um, in practical terms, if you're trying to fault find um, a system, then it's going to be down to a piece of wire somewhere, and you need to know what connects to what. So an up-to-date cable schedule is is what you actually need. Um, but if you're trying to understand a complex uh, setup, um, for me, I need to have it uh, as, a, as a system diagram. It doesn't have to be uh, down to the, the final wiring, but I do need to have... Um, or I like to have a, a visual representation of some sort so I can see how the bits fit together. Um, so uh, I tend to do both. I, I, I like to work both ways, but that's just the way my, you know, what's left in there still works. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, I'm just, I don't think you'll be able to see it because um, I'm, I'm seeing <coughs> I'm just popping up a, um, a photograph of a back, uh, the back of this monstrous router. Um, if I can get, I photo to behave itself. Here we go. Here we go. Who says Max don't misbehave? Um, so where am I? Where am I? Uh, uh, SI examples. Here we go. So I've got up on screen now, if this thing will behave itself, um, the back of the router before it's wired. And it's monstrously dense, this thing. You know, there's, there's, there's 576 connectors you know, in about 12 U, it, it, it really is ridiculous. And then I'm going to put up a picture of the same thing um, once wired. Um, and the only way we can really kind of contain the cabling and make it nice is by using lots of nylon stocking to, to, you know, to keep it all in order. Um, yeah. uh, but the, the thing about this particular matrix is it's a big black magic, you know, um, video hub, is that the cards um, have four remote ports on them and they have a proprietary connector that goes that breaks out to, to four um, D type nine pins, uh, but we always wind up landing those on, a, on an intermediate termination panel, which I've got a picture of uh, up on the screen at the moment, and then wiring from there out to equipment. It's the only sensible way you can do it because, you know, it's not easy to, to remake those cables, um, uh, and so. What that then requires of you uh, is is the thing I've got up the Excel screen I've got up at the moment is is a, a layout of the patch panels on the back of the router. Now the thing that wiremen don't like to do is to cross cables over if you're having to wire from a panel to a router yeah. at the back of a cabinet, and so and so again I used Excel to lay out what those patch panels would look like, um, and and how that then translated to the yeah. matrix ports, and I blocked them. To, to to show 
you know, which card each one went to. So in a sense, this is a plug-up schedule from the back of the panel to the back of the router. It's also indicative of what you've got, got on the back of the cabinet, i.e. if they put proper connectors on the back of this Bally matrix. So um, again, it's another thing where uh, Excel um, it's kind of auto computation, you, you know, it's kind of, I start yeah. at the, 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 you know, Jackfield one, you know, position one, and I get four positions on there. And then, you know, the next card, four slots later, continues, uh, and, and, and how that corresponds to the matrix. And again, it, by, by using kind of just very simple rippling, uh, you know, I can, I can make sure the thing totals up, and I'm still getting the right numbers on there. And then it's trivial afterwards to then block that to show what patch panels are feeding what sets of inputs on the matrix and with, with, with that whole thought in mind of i'm not going to let sets of cables cross over on the back of the matrix and so that yeah. that was you know this 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 kind of fan out schedule here um it's kind of part graphical and part sort of schedule and i was quite proud of how much information that you know we've managed to combine onto that one sort of um uh you know spreadsheet there and again that's that's useful if you're the engineer who's having to fault find yeah, mm. one of those 288 remote ports in and out of that router. Which could be quite daunting. Um, so, yeah. that, 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 that yeah. I, you know, they're just some of the tricks and bits of nonsense I do with Excel. As I say, I live inside Excel. It's what I do all my design work in. And, and AutoCAD really comes very late in the day, almost when the job's finished and the customer's you know, banging on the door demanding a, um, a schedule. I find it works with the wireman. I find the wireman rarely want to look at diagrams. They, they'd really rather look at their workload for the day and um yeah y you know it kind of kind of works for me as it were it's such a powerful tool and i'm sure there's loads more that we could do edging into the picture is somebody with a new hairstyle hey <laughs> who's <laughs> who's that That's handsome young, young chap <laughs> a handsome young chap indeed young <laughs> benjamin so there we are. fortunate he doesn't look anything at all like me it's good isn't it <laughs> <laughs> he's got a much fuller head of hair <laughs> Your, your tea's well, probably waiting for so, you, yeah. Hugh, so you better, you better scoot off. Yes. yes, supper time, I think, calls us. So, well, that was a very useful, a very interesting um, little podcast. Anybody who's got tips, send them to us because uh, we'll disseminate them. Um, Indeed, yeah. It, it's such a useful tool. We, well, there we are. Uh, till the next one. Indeed, which we've got a few more planned. Uh, we'll, we'll be less tidy this time because it's, uh, it's been a few months uh, since. Yep. So uh, I will see you soon, chap. And you too. Catch All you right. later. Bye Take bye it now. easy. Bye-bye.